It is 10.06 at WPSL 1590, the talk of the Treasure Coast. Time now for Money Info with Mike King in Las Vegas and Charles Moskowitz in Boston. You know, I think we should take advantage. First, I'll have to talk to the guys on the other end of the telephony here. Uh, maybe we should get a Money Info RV this weekend out of the fairgrounds. What do you... What do you think, Charles? It's still not, it's not still snowing in Boston, is it? It's not snowing. <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> yeah, it is yeah. nice. Wow. Yeah. Well, uh, how are things going in Las Vegas, uh, Mr. King? Well, no, we have great weather here. It's just uh, really perfect. It's been this way for weeks on end. Yep. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I've got this image, uh, Charles, of Mike, and it's like an octopus, and he's, <laughs> and he's got like a phone on each one of his. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. Well, Charles, what in the world is going on? I, you know, I, I hit about five or six sites today, um, and you know, I managed to pull off about four stories, and none of them are. None of them are worth all that much. I just can't believe it. No, it's actually kind of quiet. I yeah. mean, uh, Korea is, they say, pulling back their missiles at the coast. So that kind of, you know, fizzled out, which is a good thing, of course. Yep. And uh, things in the Middle East are very tough. Um, and through all of this, um, our options only account has managed to surpass all of last year's uh, not insubstantial gains of 171 percent. Wow. We closed Friday out at up 188 percent. Good grief. Yeah. Wow. Um, and so, uh, you know, uh, we trade in both directions, so it's not really. Uh, it's not really just the market, although this is a relatively easier market to trade than it was a year or two years ago. But uh, the fact is, um, you know, we continue to use a balanced approach and we continue to fairly uh, successfully make money in this market. And, of course, you know, one of the keys to that as I said, is the balanced approach, but it's also the use of the texting service. That's where, it. You know, we get to change direction or take profits or, you know, trade, uh, close out a loss um, on one of the rules. And, uh, you know, we just continue to march forward. Okay. How do we get the texting service, Charles? You text the word updates, U-P-D-A-T-E-S, updates to 69302. Yep. Um, and, you know, the market letter, obviously, you can get a hold of Mike or me um, by uh, calling uh, Mike in Las Vegas at 702-650-3000 or me up here in Boston at uh, 781 Eight two six eight 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 two to get started, and uh, you know, at some point in time, this is going to cease to be a free service, and and you know, maybe that's what people think. You know, you get what you pay for, and so you know, we're going to change that, and uh, it, it's a hard one to deny. Um, yeah, when you're looking at the mental results, hundred and eighty-eight uh, percent. We're, we're putting this information out every Sunday night or early Monday morning, right. and it's all there in, you know, in print. I mean, it's not like we're pulling these trades out of the air. I mean, we publish it, and we follow those trades, and we sometimes use stops. We, of course, use our two major rules, which is 50% uh, down, you liquidate the position, and 100% up, you sell half, which takes your money off the table. And, uh, you know, we've been monumentally successful over the last three years, mm -hmm. really. I mean, this is only week, uh, this is only, uh, week 18 of the year. 
so, you know, anything above the market would be reasonable returns. Uh, you know, we're 15 times what the market is giving you. Sure, sure. Yeah, that's 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 phenomenal. I mean, that's just uh, absolutely amazing. Uh, the one story that just kind of piqued my interest a little bit, um, you know, there's a little tiny town in California called Cupertino. <laughs> and there's a little tiny company out there that has made a little noise over the last few years uh, called Apple. Um, and now all of a sudden it says that they're in a little bit of hot water, supposedly, uh, for as many as 2.8 billion new smartphone customers, most of them in Asia, which is Mike King's territory. Um, and uh, apparently a lot of the wireless providers are uh, saying that they're eating too much bandwidth. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see how uh, Apple handles all this. And there's a big uh, China Mobile uh, Limited and a few other companies that are saying, uh, yeah, I don't think so. Uh, we're going to stick with Samsung. I, it's going to be interesting to see uh, what shakes with all that. Yeah, it absolutely is. Um, and, uh, you know, the dollars and cents for Apple, which everybody all of a sudden loves again, um, is dramatically different in the Far East and in Europe than it is here because uh, China Mobile, and this is, I guess, the reason why the lower priced Samsung and LG phones, uh, you know, continue to thrive there, is basically that we don't. Uh, they don't subsidize the purchase of the phone. Mm -hmm. So when you're buying an iPhone in, uh, you know, in Asia, you're paying five or six hundred bucks for it. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But again, you know, they'll have to catch up on the bandwidth. I mean, there are no two ways about it. Uh, you know, I mean, that's just a fact of life. If people are going to be using mobile devices, and, of course, that also includes the uh, tablets and the hybrid tablet notebooks. Right. You know, they'll need to use, they'll need to increase it. Yeah, well, there's all sorts of uh, discussion. I know, I guess, G5, which is the uh, um, uh, wireless through uh, power lines, uh, mm -hmm. It's very funny because, you know, a lot of the FM stations are griping and just crying the blues over that one because uh, a lot of the uh, um, uh, interference that does affect AM radio stations, like if you go in into a bridge or a tunnel or something like that, that's, that's going to happen to FM, too, if you start <laughs> sending wireless signals through power yeah. lines. So, you know, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens and... Uh, will the broadcasters come out on the short end? Uh, I don't know. It's it's going to be interesting to watch, but that should be in front of Congress uh, sometime very soon. And uh, speaking of Congress, uh, they made a little news in the Senate, guys, with yeah. the internet tax. I can't. I, we got to talk to Casey uh, um, Quintana about. Well, he'll this. be calling in in a few minutes. Oh, cool. He's been well, then let's really? hope. Let's hold off on this story. a lot of tsunami. Good. That's good. Well, we'll hold off on this story until he gets on, because I presume this will uh, uh, directly affect his uh, Internet sales, I presume. So uh, uh, we'll talk to him about that. But uh, Do you know, Greg, that, do you know that it's actually the responsibility of the uh, purchaser? I have heard that. On yes. the Internet? Yes. To declare and pay the tax? I have heard that. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, and uh, supposedly you're supposed to, uh, if, if uh, like you're in a state like uh, Florida, for instance, where you fill out a tangible, you know, property, right, intangible, uh, asset. intangible asset type thing, uh, th that's where you got to uh, uh, supposedly declare all that stuff. But mm -hmm. yeah, good luck. Uh, the one thing I noticed, uh, you know, you and Mike always talk about uh, Europe and uh, Germany, which seems to be just. Uh, going absolutely crazy over there the big story apparently in italy is that germans are buying tons of real estate in italy um and you know obviously their market has gone down uh, the minimum was 26 percent uh since 2008 
Um, and, you know, actually, it's probably three times that. But, yeah, a lot of these villas are being purchased by Germans. And, of course, now the Italians are not happy about it at all. But uh, Yeah, they'll get over it. That's right. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's that's just supply and demand and, you know, capitalism at work. Frankly, it makes a lot of sense because, you know, Germany, with few exceptions, tends to be pretty much an industrial landscape. Yep. Where Italy and Spain clearly are not. And with prices depressed, I mean, you know, I'd be welcoming them with open arms. Well, you know, I was watching Bloomberg the other day. Uh, don't ask me why. I was, must have been thoroughly bored on a Sunday. Uh, but uh, anyway, I, th- there was a story, and I forget which auto manufacturer it was, but it was like almost half their employees are foreigners because there are not enough Germans to man the plants anymore. Which it, you, I remember Bill Chip is talking about this 10 years ago, you know, when it, where he was talking about declining populations, uh, native populations in Russia. Um, in the Slovakian countries and in uh, Germany. And I, I just thought that was a fascinating story. And, you know, most of the workers in this one plant were, were Italians. Thought, yeah. Wow, this is really intriguing. It's uh, going to be interesting to see what shakes out in about 30 years. That could really be interesting. Yeah. But, well, if they're even still manufacturing, the, you know, the bulk of their cars there. You well, know, all of these yeah. places have that's the other specific story. models and stuff that are manufactured outside their borders. I mean, you know, we have BMW. I, I don't remember which BMW it is. I think it might be the X3, which is, you know, their sort of uh, SUV, the mm-hmm. small one. Mm-hmm. I think that that's manufactured exclusively in a plant in Alabama. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, you know, and of course, Honda and Toyota and, you know, all of these other manufacturers are manufacturing cars here. And, you know, that's a big plus. Actually, Mercedes, I think, uh, went into Alabama as well. I, Alabama and, uh, and the Carolinas now are getting very aggressive, you know, when it comes to that. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Really, really, really intriguing. Well, what... What has been going on? I mean, it, you know, I've been kind of peeking at this stuff all week, and, you know, I think uh, you kind of hit it on the head, Charles. It really has been a quiet time, although the S&P set an all-time record. You've got, you know, the Dow, at least this morning, is back over 15,000 again. I mean, something's going on, but it just yeah. nothing major By the way, is going on. this is a try at 17 17- Tuesdays in a row, so every Tuesday this year, basically, Yep. of having it be an up market. Okay, all right. And we were up about 50, we're now up about $8, so we're under that 15,000, 14,977. Okay. Um, and, you know, I mean, I don't know that any of this is particularly meaningful in the grand scheme of things. Um, but uh, you know the S and P is uh, the S and P is um, basically unchanged. The Dow being up substantially is now you know basically unchanged. Copper, silver, and gold are much lower. Gold is down twenty six dollars after what I think has been an unsuccessful rally. Basically, a rally of about fifty percent from the break from uh, uh, sixteen twenty down to thirteen twenty. Um, and in fact, we're short the gold. We're long the GLD um, puts, and uh, we took a small profit on a third of the position, but we still own two thirds of it. And we also bought the DZZ, which is a two to one down um, on the gold. Uh, gold is down twenty-seven dollars right now, so that's working out in a moderate way. Um, but there seems to be some, you know, this sell in May and go away. Mm-hmm. It's you know, it's not a cliche for nothing. Uh, you know, uh, most uh, most years, starting around now, people tend to take vacations, uh, you know, uh, not be as interested in the market, uh, and things kind of slack off. Hmm. That's except in post-election years. Mm-hmm. You know, in post-election years, in seven of the last nine, they've been up. 
uh, we've had an up market between June and December. Um, but, uh, you know, between June and November, mm -hmm. uh, you've had up markets in the post-election years, except for two occasions. Well, we're in a post. I outlined those in the market letter. Yeah, I. I One, of course, that. was 2001. Let's welcome Casey Quintana. Hey, Casey. Hello. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. How are you this week? Hey, thanks for hitting me on LinkedIn, by the way. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we've uh, obviously been talking once a week now, and it was uh, it was neat to see what you look like and to make that connection. <laughs> That's pretty, you can pretty, go to any post office and see. Yeah, I was gonna that. say. Yeah, you, you, you could have done you could have done that uh, right away. I mean, are you the one with the turban? Yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. How did you guess? <laughs> Oh man! Well, uh, uh, Casey, we—I was about ready to dive into this because um, I, you know, I know uh, uh, you're not exactly a, a huge monstrous fan of the Nikkei, are you? I know this was thoroughly underwhelming for Charles uh, a little bit earlier, and we were talking about the Nikkei uh, soaring to. Uh, well, do you know, I had I, I had the privilege of having breakfast with Jamie Dimon. Um, gosh, I guess it was about 15 years ago. Maybe it was 20 years ago, and he. He told me at breakfast. He goes, um, "This was when the Nikkei was at was at twenty two thousand, and the Dow was at five thousand. He goes, "He goes, watch. He goes, you're going to see the the Nikkei and the Dow cross." And I'm like, "You know what, dude? You're crazy." <laughs> yeah. Guess what? It's not. <laughs> <laughs> I guess what? I guess uh, he's not so crazy. <laughs> uh, that's uh, okay. Uh, gee, you want to eat those words now? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I had for oh, breakfast. <laughs> Holy smokes. That is so funny. Well, you know, I, I, I have to touch on this because this does affect your business a little bit, I, I think. Uh, well, that is if, if the Senate ever does anything. Uh, where uh, the Senate uh, passed the uh, Internet sales tax bill. Um, and, you know, and, of course, Charles immediately says, of course, it is... It, currently, the taxpayer's obligation to pay all the state taxes, which you know nobody's doing. Um, but uh, how does this affect a business similar to yours, where you know a lot of it uh, is web-based? Well, it's um, it, it's a couple of things. Number one, it's obviously a level playing field. So when the tide goes up, all the boats have to go up, unless you want to, you know, face evasion. Um, but the second thing is it hasn't gone through the House, which is going to be a significantly greater challenge. Right. And third, it's, um, it's by state. So each state kind of regulates what they want to do. Right. So it's, um, it's definitely not done yet. And again, it's going to be, it's not going to sail through the, through the Senate as uh, quickly as it did the uh, Congress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The house is going to be a lot more difficult sell. I mean, obviously, uh, a lot of conservative Republicans that probably will not, you know, go for something like that. But who knows? I mean, it's you got to believe that Amazon has some powerful lobbyist somewhere. You think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I would suppose so. Yeah, um, and it was somebody probably in Jamie Dimon's class too, to say the least. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> wow. But um, you know what's what's happening in your business? What's go, what's going on? Uh, you know, um, uh, a lot. Uh, actually, that was why I was late. It was um, I got held up on the phone with our uh, with our seal company, the the uh, the group that we we just we we finally finished the um, and executed the contract. And I'll tell you, those those guys uh, they have uh, quite an impressive file, uh, following. And you know our, our expectations are extremely, extremely high. Um, you know we're we're looking at at some some very substantial volume through that channel. Um, in addition to that, I you know I, I really I, I don't want to let the cat cat too far out of the bag because we're going to be um, issuing some releases. But we've we're we've got some uh, we're going to be entering some some very significant distribution channels through um, through nationwide companies um, yeah I, I really can't say much more other than that at, at this time but it, it's uh, it's significant it's very significant Wow are you talking um, web type companies or uh, brick and mortar no these are very large you know um, 
multi-billion dollar brick and mortar companies, um, you know, traded on the, on the, on the uh, New York Stock Exchange. Ooh. Um, you know, it's significant companies, very significant. Wow. They, they would eat GNC's lunch. Okay. Well, I guess. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's very exciting. Very exciting. We're just, um, you know, it's uh, no big secret. We've been talking about the um, the flavor issue that that we've we've been having, and we're 95 percent done addressing and solving that problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, once it is solved, then we're we're off to the races. We're um, going to go into production, and we're going to we're going to hit it really hard with these these companies. Um, there's uh, oh gosh, um, five six of them. Um, trying to think off the top of my head. And and they've all got orders in. As soon as you get the new product, send it out. So we're we're ready to go as soon as we get that in. We'll probably get to go into production in it. I'm hoping next week. Hmm. Any initials? That's um, any initials? Exciting, very exciting stuff. Yeah. Any initials like W or C anywhere in those names? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I don't want to. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> there would be a C, but no W. I I'm really not a big fan of of the. Uh, of the Walmart brand. <laughs> oh no, no, I was thinking of the other one, the the pharmacy uh, type W, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could always introduce it through Herbalife. Oh yeah, yeah. That's oh god. Okay. They don't have any problems. Yeah, right. <laughs> if if we want, if you know, if we did, <laughs> did uh, take that position to cut all of our compounds by ninety oh. percent and add. Flour, <laughs> then that would be a great channel for us. <laughs> or sugar or something like that. Yeah, we could do that. Oh, my. That's terrible. And if we added arsenic, then we could go to GNC. Right oh, 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 man. <laughs> oh, it's 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 getting uh, uh, in a real slippery legal issue right now, guys. Oh, but, uh, no, seriously, it's uh, that's great news, Casey. I mean, that's that's really good news. Yeah, thanks. We're um, you know, it's it's been it's been a long road coming, but you know, transactions like this don't happen overnight. So we're right seeing the light at the end of the tun- tunnel, and uh, really excited about it. Is that light possibly going to open up uh, by the end of the year, or is it something you're looking at for uh, 2014? No, th- this will be um, before the end of the summer. Oh, that quick? Yeah, we have wow. um, you know okay. the. Our holding company is Broadleaf Capital Partners. Um, okay. Their uh, website is BDLF uh, Partners, which BDLF is also their, their uh, stock symbol. We're going to be releasing the news, um, obviously on the wires, but additionally on on, uh, on BDLF Partners. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a, I'm on here every week. We, you, know, you guys will obviously be in the in the know, um, but we're going to be releasing it there as well. Yeah, Mike has told me about Broadleaf Capital. We were, t- you know, thinking about. Uh, that when we were uh, talking about uh, building the television operation. So, yeah, interesting. Huh. Okay. Good stuff. Well, Mike, uh, what, what's going on in your world uh, out, in, out in lovely Las Vegas? Well, as a matter of fact, we're delivering Tsunami to a lot of stores, and uh, they're getting very good results. Um, it's a very healthy product. In fact, i got to send you some. Yeah, I want to try. Really, the, a great product. I want to try the That's Nexus. I really want to try the Nexus. You know, I mm-hmm. um, I don't work out that much, so but uh, the Nexus thing really does appeal to me because I do, you know, like walking and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, yeah, that sounds it, very. You know, I mentioned to you that my um, my son. I've got a freakishly large um, son. He's he's eleven years old. He's uh, he's five foot ten, and. Because of his size, he, he plays, obviously, he plays basketball. He, he plays basketball for a, a team that travels the country. They, they play in New York, and they're going to New Orleans in two weeks. Travel team, yep. And yep. Yeah, they travel They they travel the state, but they also travel the country. They um, play in Texas wow. and in Ohio. So he um, has a nice touch and can make baskets. Well, he's he's center, so he's he's definitely not a shooter, but he gets, um, you know, he's had a couple of double-doubles, um, big rebounder. But you know they they'll play. Sometimes they'll play three and four games in a day. Yeah. So I started giving him tsunami. I give him um, I give him half a dose because he weighs uh, you know around one fifteen, one twenty, and he just he plays like a monster. 
he just absolutely he doesn't get fatigued in the they play in in uh, AAU they play four quarters instead yeah. of like NBA they play two halves. Um, I'm sorry, in college they play two halves, but he uh, in the fourth quarter he's as strong as in the in the first, and he plays you know depending upon the opponent. If the opponent is a smaller team, he won't play as much because he's not as fast. If it's a bigger team, then he'll play more. But he's um, you know I, I dose him up about about 15 minutes before tip off, and he's a monster. It's, wow, um, it's it's impressive. It's really impressive. Well, uh, you know, uh, better market. You know, sweetheart, he might need an agent. You know, and I'm uh, I'm right here. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's <laughs> and and you know what? As a dad, the one thing you've got to do is keep those slime balls away from your son. I mean, uh, it's 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 difficult to do by when they're in college. But I mean, before that, I mean, I, I believe me, I could tell you a thousand horror stories of the stuff I've seen in Los Angeles. It would just drive you crazy. Um, and you just don't want any of those hangers on to, you know, get their uh, uh, clams into your son. That's for sure. And it's so unbelievably competitive. In AAU, he's, he's in fifth grade. And up until seventh grade, they can play in college stadiums. After seventh grade, the NCAA will not allow AAU games in college, in, in universities, in right. NCAA universities, because they're afraid of scouting. They don't want a seventh grader to be scouted by, by college teams. It's just, they just feel it's, it's too young. It's so unbelievably competitive. Yeah, but they can they play. Can be like a Kevin Durant. Well, yeah. They could. Well, <laughs> Hopefully and, one day he is. And, Mike, you know, yeah. you, you look at a guy like a Kevin Durant who was scouted in junior high. So, you know, uh, Casey's son – uh, could conceivably be, you know, looked at by, you know, it makes no difference whether it's college or NBA or, you know, now you're starting to hear how people can actually make a real good living uh, playing in, in Europe and Israel. I mean, it's, it's, uh, and you only play once a week, which is even better. Uh, and you can <laughs> knock down about two, three million a year. And hey, that's not bad. Um, yep. But yeah, yeah, it's, uh, but seriously, uh, keep your eyes open and, uh, you know, be real careful who your son meets uh, because right. there are some really seedy characters uh, out there in the world of AAU. Uh, just kind of a word to the wise there. Probably shouldn't say that on the radio, but, I mean, you know, it's that's, <laughs> that's my background, and I, I do know it pretty well. And, uh, um, you know, that's uh, just got to be careful there. But, uh, yeah, that's well, congratulations. I'm glad the tsunami is uh, working on him. Yeah, it's it was uh, kind of an experiment, but it's it's worked out really well. We're excited about. it. I'm going to start. You know, we we uh, we're involved with a lot of NFL guys, and a lot of them after after they retire, they obviously go into coaching. Whether it's um, you know Pop Warner High School, um, you know college, but a lot of them go into coaching. So we're starting to distribute this out to them to introduce into younger athletes because, you know, the younger athletes, like I said, it's, it's competitive, and they know it. And we would rather push them towards tsunami. They're going to take something, and most of them are going to take steroids. So, um, and that has so much permanent damage that they could do their body. Yeah, I they hate just to, are not I, educated. They don't, yeah, they don't I, know I the downside. To, really hate to agree with you, but you're right. I mean, it's, it's scary. It is real scary, and... Uh, there are a couple of high school coaches. Matter of fact, um, a couple of them over a year away uh, in the Tampa Bay area that uh, uh, just got, you know, well, they lost their jobs. But uh, that was all that happened to them. But it was it was over, uh, you know, steroids um, uh, for the athletes. The FHSAA got involved and uh, slapped their hands. So, yeah, yeah, you're right. It's uh it seems to be an avenue that a lot of kids are going down, and it's just uh, it's awful. Uh, this one young guy that uh, I vividly remember, uh, um, this, this turns the clock back probably before you were born, uh, in 1972, 3, and 4 uh, with the University of Arizona. His name was Mark Arneson. He was the uh, uh, captain of the University of Arizona football team. Um, Mark died at the age of 41. Um, of liver cancer. He played uh, after he left Arizona for the St. Louis Football Cardinals. 
and uh, they just turned him into a steroid uh, puppet. I mean, they were just uh, uh, shooting him up left and right. And, 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 and I'm not just him, but several members of that team. And Mark was the first to die. And I could say first to die because there's about 10 of those guys on that team that played for the St. Louis Cardinals um, that died. You know, for, like Lyle was, Alzado. Well, it's, it's something similar to that. Yeah, you're, you're right, Charles. I mean, it's just uh, it's a god-awful road to travel. And, uh, and it, it's an easy one to really, you know, get hooked on. I mean, it's... it's See, the tsunami has ingredients you just can't normally get just anywhere. You just don't get AAKG on the in the store, like an aspirin tablet, and uh, the AAKG uh, promotes uh, dilation, vasodilation, the, the uh, opening of the pores, and then um, it stimulates protein uh, synthesis. Um, protein is the most important thing for everybody. A lot of people who don't eat right don't get enough protein. protein That's is very so true. Yep. Uh, and of course, alpha lipoic acid is important. Uh, and then creatine monohydrate um, is for cognitive, helps uh, thinking. Uh, that would not help. Have creatine much. also increases muscle size. It, it um, yeah, there, there's um, it, it's it it goes to the misinformation and uninformed public a lot of people say i don't like creatine because it it uh, increases um water weight which um it does because your muscles need water to uh to grow so um but, but creatine monohydrate it, it's that and caffeine are the two most researched supplements you know, since the beginning of time and there's um there's absolutely no disputing the, the uh, proven research that, that creatine increases strength. There's, there's just no two ways around it. And, and it's, a, it's a fantastic molecule or a compound. It's a fantastic compound. And that, that's, in part, that's in Tsunami. And, you know, Mike, Mike is, is um, right. Some of these compounds are more difficult to find. Some of them you, you can go and buy them individually. Um, but then the challenge is how much do you take? When do you take it? Right. Um, you know that that's where our, our benefit is. We're we're partners w with uh, with the Human Performance Lab at Rutgers University. There's no guesswork. Everything is tested. It's peer reviewed. Um, we're not cutting corners to, to well. Clearly, we're not cutting corners to save on price to, with, with what this costs us to make. So um, so yeah, it it just it we're we're really um, really proud of, of what we've done with Tsunami and Nexus. That's yeah, it's a, a great product. That sounds he, great. He, even I think Charles started taking it, right, Charles? I did. Yeah, and uh, he got short the gold perfectly yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> you mean that's 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 helped in the uh, uh, texting service? Well, you know. Why? You this gotta a, be alert and aware. Casey, this is a whole new area for you. That's it. <laughs> I'll have trading floors jacked up. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's it. Oh, see, see, we uh, every every week we can come up with a brand new reason to uh, uh, get into uh, either tsunami or nexus, one or the other. That's that's for sure. Well, if there's any questions, uh, we encourage anybody to call in and ask KC questions. Sure. The tsunami. No matter where you are in the country, 888-792-1590, 888-792-1590. And, of course, uh, you can uh, listen to a replay of this. Uh, Mike has got it on PrincetonResearch.com. It's archived there. And, uh, of course, yeah. Cliff will uh, toss it up to YouTube as well, and uh, you'll be able to uh, listen and actually uh, see this ugly mug of mine uh, on <laughs> YouTube as well. So, uh yeah, it's uh, you can get it in many places. There you go. So, Casey, other than that, what else is going on in the in your uh, nutritional world? Uh, anything? Nexus. Yeah. Because in the, the new product's not going to have the ALA, so he's, uh, it's going to be dominantly in the Nexus, right, Casey? Yeah, alpha lipoic acid is a is an important compound, um, but that that was really the culprit for 
having the flavor issues. So we, we took that out and we replaced it with betaine, which is an extract from, obviously, beets uh, because of the name. Um, and, you know, betaine is, is proven through, uh, through research to increase torque. Hmm. So, um, gosh, I'm, not, I'm trying to figure out how to uh, best explain it. Uh, when you're lifting weights, torque is, is what causes you to lift weights. I know it's, it's muscle also, but your muscle is torque. So, um, so betaine has shown to, uh, to have an effect and an increase on, on torque. And uh, so we took the, um, the alpha-polic acid out, but we have it with in uh, Nexus, as Mike said. And the two products, they just work synergistically together. Um, you know, the, the Nexus is something that you take every day just like you would uh, multivitamin. And it's funny, um, my, again, going back to my son, they, they practice four hours a day. When they don't have tournaments, they practice eight hours on Saturday. Oh, so his yeah. body takes a beating. Yeah, and I'm gonna start giving him Nexus because he's starting to have inflammation flare-ups, and uh, and and I'll, I'll report back how that works on on him. He's like my guinea pig. <laughs> wow, you know, at, at that age, they're practicing him that long. It's it, it's as <sighs> close as you can come to college without going to college he misses you know a fair amount of school because he's traveling for tournaments um they, they practice you know we leave we leave the house at at 4 30 in the afternoon we get back at nine o'clock at night um on weekends like i said if they don't have it they're not traveling for a tournament they um you know they, they practice from you know roughly 10 in the morning till six at night um then they watch game tape it's 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 quite it's quite an undertaking <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I just, you know, <laughs> the, the the colleges that I broadcast for do not practice that long. I mean, it's uh, that's amazing. That is truly amazing um, that they work them that hard at that age. That's wow. Interesting. Very yeah, interesting. Their, their coach um, played in the NFL for several years, and he's um, extremely competitive. His uh, he tells you he doesn't hide the fact that his goal, his first job is to get kids ready to be scouted for, um, for college. Obviously, second goal is to, is to win games, um, but he's extremely driven. The team is nationally ranked, and, um, you know, he's done, he's done a great job. But, yeah, they, when you're pushing, even at 11 years old, when you're pushing your body to those limits, I, I just think even their, though kids are much more efficient at processing foods than, than you know, adults are, um, they still need, to, they, when you're pushing your body to that extreme, you need to supplement your body. You just can't get enough nutrients from the food chain to, to, uh, to fuel your body through the, that type of activity. Oh, yeah. I, I think it's, it's necessary for all kids, to be honest with you, for all kids that are that, are, um, that active. That's amazing. I, I, I'm just, I'm shocked that they actually uh, spend that much time. Well, so... Uh, when you're looking at a high school, say, uh, because he's what two years away uh, from well, high he's school. He's in fifth grade, so he's yeah, he's oh, got he's, a couple, he's, he's got, three uh, years, three away. more years. Ah, three more. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, what will you be looking at now? Are you looking at or like a regular high school or a prep school or I mean, what do you envision? Well, we're hoping that that he will get. He, um, Besides being an athlete, he's um, he's great academically. He's on the National Honor Society, so we're hoping that between his academics and his athletics, that he'll be offered a scholarship to um, to a, a particular um, private school that's in Tampa that has a, a tremendous has a tremendous athletic program. The school district we're in, um, the public school district we're in, is is great academically, but they don't have that great of an athletic department. So we're hoping that he'll get a scholarship to to the private school. Well, I'll tell you, I was uh, over in Lakeland, and Tampa Jesuit was playing for the uh, for the title. And uh, well, that that's that's the school. Is that the school? <laughs> well, and let me tell you, I thought I believe me, and I've done college basketball now for the last uh, five years here uh, in Florida. I thought I was watching a college team. I really did. It was they were so disciplined, and uh, the systems were down so well. Yeah, I didn't think I was watching high school. Um, then it came to our game, and it looked like a high school game. But but still, yeah, it, interesting. Well, I, boy, if he could get into that school, that'd be awesome. Yeah, 
But again, you're talking a tuition that's almost as expensive as college. Oh my God, it's as, it's as expensive as USF. I think it's eighteen thousand a year. It, yeah, I've heard for, that uh, for tuition plus yeah. all the other expenses. Yeah, yeah, you're looking at over uh, twenty thousand a year. Charles can uh, Charles could just flip you that money though. I mean, that's sure. That's just a couple days for him. So I mean, not a big <laughs> deal. Wow, that's that's an amazing story, Casey. Well, good good luck with all of that. I think that's uh, that would be good. It's uh, and obviously, if he was there, you know, he might get steered up to uh, maybe an ACC school if he continues to grow, and uh, possibly uh, somebody like a Duke or you know, in one of the Catholic schools that are you know the the new Big East. So interesting stuff. Keep it maybe going. Maybe we should him in <laughs> yeah, I might be covering him in a few years. That would be something. <laughs> that really would be something. So, Charles, uh, we've got about 14 minutes. What looks uh, uh, what looks exciting? I mean, this <laughs> this man. It seems like we've really pulled out the stops on this show. It's it doesn't seem like anything's going on yet. The Dow and well, the, Charles wants to buy Pfizer. Fine. Really, yep. he wants to buy PFE. <clears throat> Uh, he put a bid in below the market. Of course, tomorrow's their uh, dividend day. They pay a dividend. If you buy it today, you get the dividend tomorrow, and the stock will automatically be down by the amount of the dividend. So I'll probably get it tomorrow. But it's um, uh, probably you know, I, Pfizer's turn. Know, Every it, stock, these stocks take turns at a bull market. They rotate. Yeah. And Pfizer and, hasn't had a move yet. And And frankly, in a bull market, you know, any of these stocks that go lower tend to work their way back up. Well, um, look at Fossil. Fossil just makes handbags out of Richardson, Texas. These are Texans. You know, what do they know about fashion? Well, they, they also make... 25, 25% improvement in sales. Yeah, they also make a lot of the private label stuff for, uh, for example, they make all of the Michael Kors fashion watches. Um, they they make a bunch of watches also, and the sales in the accessory area have been, you know, really terrific. These must uh, be disgruntled oil people, people that couldn't make it in the oil. <laughs> <laughs> they turned to handbags. They're and making look what they did. They're uh, going crazy. Oh, my God. The stock's up a... $8. It was up $8 earlier today. Yeah, that's where it is. Really? It's coming up about 8 It's unbelievable. Who but, you, you know, as I was saying, in a, in a bull market, you get these moves to the downside, and, uh, you know, they attract attention at some point in time when they, when they just can't push them any lower, they take them back up. Um, Verifone, P-A-Y, is another one like that. Gapped big to the downside. We also traded IBM after the earnings. It gapped to the downside, and now it's right back up to... You know where it started pre-earnings. So you know when you get a wow. market like this, a, a real, a, a serious bull market. Um, you know, it's. I don't want to say it because it sounds like you get complacent, but you know, you miss it. You wait for a pullback, or you own it and it gets crushed, and you wait for a pullback to have it come back. Uh, I mean, that's kind of uh, bull market philosophy. Yeah, tomorrow we'll probably have a little pullback. It's Wednesday, counter trend day. Mm -hmm. A little pullback tomorrow. I would expect that. And then uh, uh, look to buy stocks that haven't participated but are quality, like Pfizer. Well, uh, and I think Oracle too. I haven't put out the. Uh, I haven't put out a text on it yet, but I'm keeping a fairly close eye on that one too. O R C L. Um, I'd like to see that come in just a little bit more. Um, we bought the DZZ, which is the double gold to the downside, and we also own the GLD puts. So um, those are pretty healthy with the gold here. It's uh, 1447 down another 21 today. Um, but the market is coming back again. You know, now we're back over 15,000. The S&P is up, you know, two and a half or three dollars, uh, up 377 now, and the Dow is up just short of 40. At fifteen thousand and eight, so uh, you know, I mean, this is a 
seems to be a pretty healthy market. I just, you know, every time I say it, I feel like I'm getting complacent and that, you know, things only work until they don't work. You know, I mean, (laughs) as soon as people get, you know, as soon as people get used to buying every pullback, you know, it'll pretty much stop working. But, uh, you know, it's acting okay now. The oil is down a little, 57 cents. Uh, The silver is down 27 and a half. I saw it down as much as about 45 cents. Uh, The apple, which was up two or three, is down about four dollars right now um, but you know the secondary ones in those areas also um, are, are acting a lot better also Perigo, p-r-g-o i don't know if they had earnings or what today or last night but the stock is about a uh, 104 and it's down about four dollars they are a they are a generic drug maker and, uh, you know, we've traded that a bunch of times. We've traded it from the 80s all the way back up to, uh, you know, the 110, 120 area. Um, you know, that's another one. Good, solid pipeline, lots of stuff going off patent. And, uh, you know, this is one of the biggest manufacturers that there is wow. for those, those type of drugs. Interesting stuff. The other thing that I'm noticing on TV, and I know that this is going to sound just ludicrous as a way to uh, pick stocks. It's not that I'm picking it this way. It's just how it came to my attention. Um, iRobot, I-R-B-T, is all of a sudden running all kinds of ads. And they're pretty aggressive ads. Um, and, you know, the stock is up a bit, but they make they make the rumba. They make uh, some of the manufacturing robots. Um, you know, they make robots for the military to defuse or blow up, you know, uh, IEDs and uh, for the fire department and bomb squads to, you know, get closer without, you know, sending an actual human being. Right What's the symbol there. again? I... B-R-T, I believe, or I-R-T. Oh, what a cool company that is. Oh, it, yeah. It really is. Now, the last time that I saw a stock like this that came to my attention because it was advertising was a company that we traded a couple of times called Sonosite. And the symbol was S-O-N-O. And they, they're still running ads. They're running commercials. Yeah, I've seen right. it. Right. Except that when they started running commercials, the stock was 15 and, you know, it's kind of uh, a portable, um, portable uh, ultrasound, which acts very much the same way as a uh, CT or an MRI would work. Yep. And Fujifilm came in and paid about 45 bucks for the company. Wow. And, and so, <laughs> it, you know, it's, it's when you start to see these things hitting the public eye, People are naturally curious about sure, them. Sure. And so, uh, you know, anything that draws attention to th- these companies, you know, I basically it grabs my attention. Uh, but you have to do the homework. Well, now the the robot company was that that was that the one that was used in the uh, Boston bombing case? Were those um, well, the, uh, the I don't know there? specifically if it was, but they something make similar to that. Yeah, they, they make those. Wow. The advertisements um, that they're running, the commercials that they're running on TV, show usage of everything from being able to clean your gutters without, you know, having to stand on a ladder to, uh, you know, bomb defusings in war zones. So, you know, they have a pretty, uh, you know, they have a pretty broad range of products that are available. Wow. By the way... And frankly, as we've discussed here before, you know, robots are not inexpensive, but, you know, the savings in uh, the cost of human life um, is tremendous. Got that right. Yep. If we could uh, certainly save a few more... I mean, it isn't like, like the Army's going to buy 27 of them. The Army's going to buy 27,000 of them. I was going to say, and, yeah. and they're going to be adapted to each of the individual uses. Sure. And, and they're not going to pay retail. They're going to pay five times retail. That's, sure. <laughs> That's right, Casey. You know, whatever happens when you buy in bulk, you get a bargain. Uh, it's, uh, 
Uh, uh, the Pentagon doesn't work on that theory. Uh, yeah, no kidding. Yeah, exactly. By the way, is SeaWorld a publicly traded company? Um, I don't know. know if it, yeah, yeah. And, and there's a big, big um, push in those kind of stocks now because those are the ones that people go on what they call staycations. You know, you don't yeah. want to spend uh, $800 for airfare for, you know, your wife and your two kids to go somewhere else. You know, you spend uh, $150 on gas and you get a hotel room and you go to, you know, Six Flags and, uh, you know, Universal and Disney and all of those. I mean, this is the time of the year where that stuff really starts to, you know, get bookings and stuff. The reason I ask is I had an NFL uh, real insider tell me uh, last, uh, well, a couple days ago that uh, uh, it could be the SeaWorld Dolphins moving to San Diego if the Chargers move to Los Angeles. How about that? Yeah, I did see something about that. Um, yeah. Jane Wells on CNBC was talking about Oh, yeah. It. It's, it's, it's been very quiet, you know, that, and, of course, uh, uh, the Florida legislature uh, uh, let the bill die. Uh, apparently, Stephen Ross, wanted, the owner of the Dolphins, wants uh, uh, the folks in Florida to pay for his new uh, new improvements to the stadium rather than what Joe Robbie did is private stadium. You all pay for it myself. I think right. those. Yeah. Well, guess what? Ain't gonna happen. And of course, now he's saying, "Well, I guess team's gonna move." You know what? Let him move. If that's exactly. the case. Yeah, I mean, it's just like the Tampa Bay Bucks going to London. I mean, if that happens, it happens. You know, it's one of those things. That will not happen until the rocket plane comes out. Once the rocket plane comes out, all bets are off for any right. of the franchises. It's like uh, once you can get somewhere, like what's now a six- or seven-hour flight, an hour, um, yeah. that's that, that changes everything. Again. How about the heat getting kicked yesterday? That's rust. Ah, oh, that was painful. They didn't. Well, they yeah, didn't but play. I'll tell you, Chicago's a physical team. They played a phenomenal second half. Yeah. Even though LeBron had what twenty-seven points in the second half, the the, the Bulls are just a, a great. Even without Derrick Rose, are a great physical team. Well, mm-hmm. can you uh, uh, create something for the mind, Casey? Uh, so <clears throat> maybe <laughs> Derrick Rose, who is okay physically to play, but not mentally. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know if I agree with that. He's he's a Chicago native with his team that has a somewhat of a legitimate shot. I think that if he could be out there, that he would be out there. There's somebody from Chicago early in their career with a chance to win a championship and be a big part of that as one of the premier point guards in the country. If he could be out there, i got to believe as a competitor that he would be out there. I don't believe it's psychological. I think that he's he's just afraid of permanent damage well and uh, that may be right i mean you know your own body i mean that's the thing as an athlete no matter if you're a weekend warrior or whatever you know you uh you know your own body and uh anyway that's where tsunami and nexus can uh, come in uh charles how do we get the texting service text the word updates u-p-d-a-t-e-s updates to 69302 and michael the newsletter how do we get it www.princetonresearch.com All right, guys. Hey, we'll be uh, talking to all of you next week right here on WPSL Worldwide, WPSLTV.com.